Yokoya is a lonely loser who misses his mama's jugs who left to get some milk, but his life changes for the better when a plotful maid assassin asks him to employ her and be his master. It was a normal day for Yokoya, who's sleezing around, sleeping till noon, but suddenly, someone rang his doorbell, forcing him to get up. When he goes to the door on the camera, he sees a maid who looks like Emo Violet Evergarden, asking him to employ her as his maid. After Yokoya lets her in, he lets her sit on his couch, gives her a drink, and starts thinking to himself that she's here either to sell his kidneys or to sell him some happy white powder. He asks her about her previous experiences as a maid, but instead, she tells him that she worked as an assassin before who targeted people who rebelled against her master, the same master that sent her here. Yokoya thinks she's joking, but after realizing she's not, Yokoya gets nervous. He asks about her boss and his relation to his family, and she starts explaining how her boss once owned a goldfish who had a baby that turned into a dog who lived for Nemo, and that guy was the friend of Yokoya's mom. Yokoya slaps her hand out of frustration, but quickly realizes he screwed up, potentially pissing her off, so he changes the subject and asks her about her specialty method in assassinating people. Then, they go outside and she pulls out her knives, does a backflip, eats the knives accurately at the tree, and shows her specialty, which is knife throwing. She proudly smiles and explains that knife throwing is just one out of many of her abilities as an assassin. But despite having seen her amazing abilities, Yokoya tells her that he can't employ the female John Wick as his servant. While it does upset her, she understands his decision, apologizes for taking his valuable time and leaves. As she walks through the door, Yokoya falls to his knees in disbelief at what just happened. But when he looks down, he finds something. Meanwhile, the maid is walking by herself without a purpose thinking to herself what she needs to do next. She looks back, expecting Yokoya to chase her, but gets disappointed to see no one there. However, just as she's crossing the train track, Yokoya screams out for her, with the bell in his hand, stating that she left it behind. When the maid turns around, truck is about to send Yokoya to an isekai, but she goes flying raging and saves Yokoya from his death. Unlike before, the maid looks adorable with blushes on her cheeks and Yokoya thanks her for saving him. She apologizes for saving him, stating she never saved people before, and that her heart is beating fast. Yokoya hands her the bell, and she thanks him for giving it back before she leaves again. However, as she's walking away, Yokoya changes his mind and tells her that he needs her help with cleaning. Back home, Yokoya is in shock seeing all the knives she has as she's unpacking her stuff. While the maid is blabbing about how her knives could have stopped the rumbling, Yokoya stops her and tells her he needs her to clean his trash not cleaning the streets from the 304s with daddy issues. However, she only has cleaning corpses in her mind, and Dukoya tries his best to explain that it's a different kind of cleaning and that he needs a housekeeper. She asks him if he will really hire her as long as she does his chores, and he agrees. Later, Yokoya comes back to a mess with her wet, holding a broken mop and a bucket on her head. She starts apologizing profusely and suddenly slips from the wet floor but quickly maneuvers herself to land like Spider-Man while still having the bucket smack her head. After what he has seen, Yokoya asks her if she's actually clumsy, and she apologizes for her mistakes, while feeling ashamed of herself. Yokoya takes the bucket off her head, gives her a towel, and tells her that she can start learning from now on, with him helping alongside her. He asks her to continue, and she cutely nods. Hours later, the place is squeaky clean, and Yokoya praises her for her hard work, making her happy. Then, Yokoya sees the time, realizes it's time for dinner, and asks her if she can cook. She looks down like a poor dog, and Yokoya assures her that it's okay as he will be doing the cooking while she takes a bath. In the bathtub, the maid thinks about Yokoya while blushing, getting herself wet from the water inside out. Meanwhile, Yokoya is outside thinking out loud to himself, feeling anxious, and not knowing what to do when a plotful emo maid is taking a bath just meters away from him. He gets heated thinking about the maid coming out with only wearing towels, but she comes out in full uniform, disappointing Yokoya. Then, they start dinner, and while Yokoya warns her, the maid feels confident and starts chopping the cabbages like they're human bodies. Yokoya pulls out some ramen and fried pork, and it confuses her on what fried pork is. She explains that she might eaten them before, but she has never been much of a foodie to care much about what she eats. The maid states that eating is only to sustain life, and flavors are not important. But Yokoya assures her that one bite of the fried pork will make her cream and release happy noises like she's in food wars. Yokoya feels confident in these discounts fried pork and splits it into two portions for himself and the maid. But he realizes that he doesn't know her name, 
The maid tells Yokoya that she doesn't have a name and that her master usually gives her a name. At first, he wants to name her Big Steve 9000, but chooses to give her a name later after getting some inspiration. Then they start eating and after her first bite of the fried pork, she still thinks that she can't tell what Tasty is like, triggering her memory of a dark past. But this time, she feels warm inside and tells Yokoya that his meat tastes delicious. She tells Yokoya that both the food and him as a person feel warm to her. But he doesn't hear what she says and tells her that he has prepared a room for her to stay. Yokoya tells her that he prepared the room beautifully just for her. And after hearing this, she remembers an ever darker past of her bathing in blood. But unlike those times, she wants her new master to treat her with care. Yokoya notices her pork doesn't have sauce unlike his, so he hands the sauce to put on her pork. And after she takes a bite, she feels the umami in her mouth, making her squeal out happy noises to the almighty tonkatsu sauce. Later at night, Yokoya wakes up crying at night after he had a bad dream, but then his stomach starts growling. He walks down to eat something, but suddenly a voice comes out from his kitchen. He gets scared thinking that the maid is plotting something, and when he looks inside, he sees the maid snacking on the tonkatsu sauce. They both freeze awkwardly before she tries to apologize for being a new sauce addict, but Yokoya tells her it's okay and asks if she's also hungry. Then, Yokoya whacks out a saucy hot pot and they start eating which she is really enjoying. The maid asks Yokoya if he is having nightmares, and after the answers, she reveals that she heard someone sleep talking in his room. She thinks that an assassin entered his room, so she enters with knives in her hands, but instead of an enemy, she sees Yokoya sleeping with tears in his eyes. Yokoya feels embarrassed, and she states that he was calling out for his mom in his sleep, which embarrasses him even more. She tries to cheer her up, stating that she also had a dream where the sauce talked to her saying that she can lick the sauce all she wants as he will stuff her up. But before she starts licking, she wakes up from her sleep. However, she states that it's the first time she dreamt about something apart from assassination, and that it's the first time she wanted to continue a dream, unlike her other dreams. She feels upset that Yokoya has a nightmare on the same day, and that she can't comfort him. Yokoya confesses that he has this dream of her mom leaving him for a new daddy, and that he will start crying if he wakes up not lying on his mother's lap. After hearing this, the maid offers him her lap to lie on, and when Yokoya rejects her offer, she gets sad, thinking that she can never comfort people, only murdering them. Suddenly, Yokoya lies down, breaking her darkness, and they both feel warm with each other. Yokoya looks at her face, realizes she's looking back at him, and he sleeps right on her warm and plumpy lap. In her mind, she wonders why her heart was beating so fast when she saved Yokoya, unlike the times when she sent people to their deaths so she wants to understand why her body moved fast to save him. The next morning, she plays Fruit Ninja on the trash before putting them in the bag. And when Yokoya asks why she does that, she explains that it saves space which impresses Yokoya. Suddenly, they find a stranded dog in front of the house, and beside it is a letter from a broke dunny who left the dog at Yokoya's house. Thinking that he's a wealthy man will gladly take care of it. Despite his objection, Yokoya wants to take it in, not wanting it to die out of abandonment, but unlike her master, the maid has a different way of thinking. She states that the little dog has its own animal instincts, and saving it out of sympathy would make the dog less capable in its abilities to survive hardships. Turning the dog into a little she asks Yokoya if he's ready to take that responsibility, and he simply doesn't care about all that cheese, stating that just like him saving the dog, she didn't save him from his death out of sympathy, and that when one's life is in danger, a person's body would move on their own, wanting to save them. It touches the maid's feelings hearing what Yokoya said, and he tells her that just like the dog, he knows what it feels like to be abandoned. Then he takes the dog inside and quickly gets attached to it. But unlike him, the maid keeps her distance from the dog like it's a plague. Yokoya tries offering the maid to touch the little bugger, but she slides away from it. And after seeing her reaction, Yokoya realizes that she is scared of dogs. She starts figuring out of shame which Yokoya thinks looks cute but she informs him that she would forcefully touch it if her master orders her to, which Yokoya tells her he won't. He asks her why she's scared and the maid explains that during one of her assassin trainings, she was left in a mountain filled with fierce wild dogs from Berserk. Yokoya understands her trauma and deems it a shame that she can't help take care of the dog. But after hearing her master call it a shame, the maid feels disappointed in herself. With full chest and jugs, the maid asks to hold the dog, but in her first attempt, she holds the puppy like holding an active nuke, causing her to shiver her milkers. After Yokoya asks which part of the dog scares her, she points out the claw, the teeth, and the devilish eyes. 
but Nikoya says that unlike her, he sees it like it's a mochi which to her is an alien concept. Suddenly, the dog gobbles on her finger, causing her to start tweaking, almost yeeting the little b turning it into a hot dog. After calming down, the dog nibbles on Yokoya. And seeing this phenomenon, Yokoya checks its teeth and realizes that it's teething, so they take it to the animal hospital. While Yokoya takes the pup for a checkup, the maid goes shopping for some dog supplies, impressing Yokoya and the dog with how caring she can be. They take the dog on a walk, and after everything she went through, the maid tells Yokoya that she has never met a stud as gentle as him. She tells him that unlike him, her previous masters were cold and only cared about her finishing the job, not tolerating any failures, unlike Yokoya who treats her gently, despite her plenty of failures. She asks him to let her stay in this world of his, a world different from hers where everything is cold and survival is the name of the game through assassinating people and finishing a job. The maid wants to be like the dog who meets him in a world of warmth and eventually becomes someone that Yokoya wishes for. After everything she says, Yokoya tells her that what she wants is to stop being an assassin and start becoming a normal girl, something that she never thought about before. To send people to their deaths was the only thing that she knew in her entire life, but now, with her new master, she feels hopeful that she can learn more about him and this wonderful new world. Yokoya confesses that while at first he was scared of her, but now he sees her as nothing but a good kid. Hearing herself getting called a good kid reminds the maid of her past, and because of this, she asks him to help her become a normal girl. Despite Nikoya not knowing much about tampons and pads, he tells her that she should start learning to feel normal when she makes mistakes, and not be pressured too much by it. The next morning, the dog wakes up to the sound of her learning how to cut cabbage, and she wants to learn how to make okonomiyaki so she can pair it with some sauce that she loves. Suddenly, the dog instant transmissions to her leg, causing her to freak out, not believing that a normal dog can sneak up behind her and assassin. The dog's stomach growls, and realizing that it's hungry, she feeds it dog food. While the dog is busy going to town on the food, she tries to touch it, only to stop when Yokoya appears. He starts caressing the little fluff, and after touching its fat belly, Yokoya decides to name the dog Mochi. Yokoya praises the maid for feeding the dog and cutting the cabbage, giving her a twirl before praising her work, which rizzes the maid. On his leg, Mochi starts humping and asks to play, but Yokoya can't play as he needs to prepare dinner. However, the maid tells him that she will take care of it, stating that she wants to be a normal girl who can believe in what he said when Yokoya says that the dog is a bundle of fun. Yokoya uses his daddy Riz and tells her he believes in her too, folding her ten folds and firing up her passion. With full trust in her master, the maid starts touching the dog, and with each caress, she starts getting closer to it, giving it the almighty belly rubs and touching its paw. Now she understands that, just like Yokoya who's scared of her at first, she grows to trust the little doggy, just like how Yokoya grows to trust her. At dinner, she starts creaming after eating the saucy okonomiyaki, and when Yokoya offers her a second portion, she tries denying it while her body language shows that she's excited for his saucy and creamy dish. Yokoya assures her that if she has a request, she should just ask him for it, and seeing this opportunity, she asks him to give her a name. Yokoya starts thinking and asks her about her birth date and while she doesn't know the exact date, she knows it was during the winter. Yokoya has an idea and names her Yuki, taken from the snow. It reminds her of her old boss, who calls her cold-blooded. But unlike him, Yokoya likes the snow because it looks beautiful, reminding Yuki of her past when she made a snowman. Yokoya yaps some riskful theory that snow is also warm when it covers a field, protecting the seeds from the cold and for them to eventually bloom into beautiful flowers with the help of the snow's protection. After hearing his yapping and seeing Yokoya's clapped face, it makes Yuki wonder why everything on her life becomes more warm and beautiful when she's alongside him. She realizes that as long as she stays in his world, she will one day understand what it's like to be normal. With her reason in full effect, Yuki thanks Yokoya for naming her, and she starts glitching out smiling, and it makes Yokoya happy to see her smile normally. Comment, dotting the maid if you want a part 3. And if you like anime recaps like this, then watch this video right here.